everybody, it is Kellaxon here. If you guys enjoy this video, remember that you guys should become patrons over on Patreon if you guys want to support the channel. But if you guys just enjoy this video, you guys should subscribe. So, we haven't done one of these in a while because I'm lazy and I don't like writing the scripts. I <laughs> forgot that we were doing these. Problems, praise, and possibility. What? Okay, I'm I love sorry. how you were strong with the first class, teetered with the second class. I mean, it's because and... I looked at you and you were like, oh, Well, I wasn't sorry. expected there to be anyways. Any continue. clapping? I'm yes. sorry. Okay, this is a little off topic, but did you see that thing where this British school was, like, encouraging people not to clap because of people with anxiety or whatever? Like, clapping could cause, like, a panic attack? I've not heard about I'm panic. like, did I do that to you, Hunter? Is that what's going on? Have, but anyways. That's a very bizarre That's story. like a whole other story. But anyway, we're talking about Adam today, and we have quite a bit to cover, so I guess I shouldn't have teetered off with that. Um, well, if we're talking about problems, I could think of like one or two. But Like continue. one or two? Okay. I'm not being so, a good person. Uh, continue. I mean, so I think that... With Ruby, so here's the problem. With Ruby, I think it always comes down to being vague or things being rushed. Like, in terms of what causes most of the character problems. Because, like, like I feel like, I don't know. Like, Adam just has had character issues, I feel, that come from the situation, like, comes from situations that the writers made from the beginning, to some extent, and we'll talk about that in a second. But let's start at the beginning. So I think that the biggest problem with Adam, first of all, is just being vague, and so that's what I mean. Like, people was like, oh, he's such a cool badass, right? But, you know, and now, like, people had all these this time, like, three years or however long, right, to kind of theorize about Adam and, like, make him out to be maybe a lot more than he was, and, like, I feel like that may have created a lot of problems just because people still wanted to Adam to be, like, the cool guy and then, like, those Adam people, like, blame ba- like, ah, blame Blake and it's like, oh, she made Adam abuse her, which is not okay, good! That's, that's pretty weird. bad! I haven't seen that jump I've seen a couple- I've seen logic. a couple of those and also, oh, well, you know, like, maybe, maybe, like, Ad what Adam did wasn't so bad, you know what I mean? Just justifications, right? And I feel like that's the problem. Like, what if at the beginning, like, people are defending Adam because they're holding on to this version of him that they built in their heads, right? They haven't come to terms with, like, the creepy Adam that, like, abused and gaslit Blake, you know what I mean? Like, they still are holding on to, like, the vague Adam that we got. And if they had this abuse storyline from the beginning, I think that they should have showed some of it in the Black trailer, like, all the way back there, or at least had it mentioned earlier in the volume. So even though Adam would still be, like, a mystery, right, people would have already known what- noon People would have already known what they were getting into, right? I think people understood- I think most lot. people do, but I think that there's a big- a big part that that's where it stems from. Like, we have a lot of problems in Volume 5, and we're gonna get to those, but I think where the, it stems from is people thought he was something he wasn't. Just like people were disappointed with what happened with Raven, it's because they had this idea of her, and then she came- and then it was kind of bad, people and so it made it worse. People were disappointed with Raven? I, listen. Anyway, we'll talk about that. <laughs> That's a whole other video. But what if, like, Blake tried to get off the train, and, like, there was some sort of struggle between them, where Adam, like, wouldn't let her go, and all of that, and they had some sort of, like, fight. Like, maybe he tries to, like, shoot her, like, as she tries to run away, and, like, hurts her. Maybe he tries to grab her, or he, like, slaps her for trying to run, then attempts to apologize, like, oh, he didn't mean it, you know, what? like, oh, I didn't mean that, Blake, I'm so sorry, like he kind of did, um, in the Adam short. Like, literally anything to kind of show the contrast between, wow, Adam's an awesome badass, like, how you would be thinking at the beginning of the Black trailer, but then at the end of the Black trailer, it's like, ew, like, we were just rooting for this guy, and he's a gross boy, like, no, you know what I mean? So that, I think, would have kind of been nice. And I think this would in turn help with Blake's characterization because a lot of people, I guess, are annoyed at, first of all, the menagerie sort of arc, which I understand, but they don't, I feel like people don't get why Blake ran away, like her trust issues, and I feel like if yeah, they I had seen like Adam do that in the beginning, then maybe people would have connected it more with why she ran, because people are like, wow, Blake's such a bitch, why did she run away, why is she slapping son, like, why is she like, being such a bitch right now? I feel like, like, if that's... we had seen stuff at the beginning, people would be like, oh, see, she slapped son because, like, when Adam got all up in her face like that, like, it, or went through, her, like, went, invaded her privacy, because that's another thing abusers do, like, that that would have been, you understand what I'm saying? Like, that would have helped. That would have helped yeah, maybe with her characterization. Yeah, but then I feel like people have the issue of uh, forgetting that they're watching, like, a smaller part in a longer story and that it would make more sense later 
and secondarily of just not appreciating like if you're if you just liked Adam so much and were entirely blind to his like characterization of an abuser especially by Blake at many times throughout the series and that's like their fault that's I know Rudy's but it would have been nice at the beginning if we saw something like that like think about how cool that although Jordan when you would think be. about people who discuss abusers they tend not to discuss in such clear language they tend to discuss it yeah. in like innuendo well that's why so we would be able to see was, it like if we saw yeah, it in the black trailer but this is like this is like an, a big if right because we're not like, we can't go back and do that now. <laughs> like, it's too late for that, you I know what say, I mean? I was going to say we, like, were in any way involved with the production of No, I, I mean, like, like in terms of, the like, royalty. life. Like, we can't go back in time, you know what I mean? And so these are more, like, when we talk about problems, like, the problems have already passed, right? So we're just listing problems that Adam has had up until this point, and then we give the praise and the possibilities for the future. Right? Like, that's that's why we have this formula. We're listing everything wrong, okay. but then giving a reason to make it right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, continue. I would have really liked Adam just to be more of a Joffrey. Like, he's a little shit and you hate him, but you can respect that he's well-written. You know what I mean? Like, you can like the writing, but not the person. But I feel like that's just, like, the constant Someone struggle is we can't like hate. the writing or the person. Yeah, exactly! But I don't know if Adam is fun to hate. I don't have fun hating Adam. Hating Adam is, like... And a big yikes! Like <laughs> that's how I feel I about Adam. He's a he's a big yikes. Is I had what fun he hating like Roman. He was a lot of fun to hate. Um. Yeah, and I, I think I liked Roman too. At the same time, like he had this charisma yes. to him. He had this charm. He had this like Adam pizzazz. Has Adam has nothing. <laughs> that's a problem. And that's the thing too. Like people think that like Adam's like a heartless sociopath, but usually sociopaths can manipulate people into liking them. So. That's a little I mean, awkward. Not for Blake, just not for us. Well, not not for us, not for anyone else ongoing. Like moving on, I guess. Um, here's my other thing. I don't like Adam's voice. I'm sorry yeah, to little, like whoever like, plays him, but he's pretty monotone and he doesn't have any emotion, and that's good for like oh, like heartless sociopath deadpan. Like I don't think that like I think that's not their I don't think that was their intention. You know what I mean? Like it, I think that was just sort of an accident, right? Like, because people are like, oh, he's supposed to sound like this. I don't, I think his voice actor is just, it doesn't work. I just think his voice actor is bad. I think that's the problem, right? And this is early Ruby, right? So everybody was just in-house talent. But if you could make Adam now, right? Like, you could give him, like, a, a bomb-ass voice actor. I don't know who I would pick for him particularly off the top of my head, but I'm sure you guys could imagine someone better. Yeah, no. But to continue, uh, we don't really see him in Volume 4, so we can forget about that for the most part, but Volume 5 is where kind of the mess continues, and I feel like the mess si kind of starts with Sienna, and ends with Sienna to some extent, like, we know nothing about their relationship or, like, their role of each other in each other's lives, and then she's just dead. Like, we find out later that, you know, she was this big part of, like, a big part of his life. Right? Like, oh, Gira, he's a hero. Like, she encouraged him. Like, she was the first person that maybe believed in him. Like, that's important. And we find that out after the Adam trailer. Like, it would have been nice to see some of their relationship before. And, like, it's not interesting to just have him kill her because, like, I don't know. Like, they needed some conflict, like, before she dies or, like, have some inner conflict. Either outwards they should have fought or Adam should have been hesitant to do it because, like, I don't know, maybe, like... If, if Sienna and Adam had a really good fight scene, I think that would have done wonders for his character in the show, but maybe Adam would have had some inner conflicts about killing her, because remember, Corsic and Finnick are trying to, like, pull strings or some bullshit. They didn't do a very good job. Corsic and Finnick are also Rush characters, but that's a whole other story, right? But I think, like, that would be a lot more compelling if they had a fight, or if, like, Adam was maybe remorseful. Like, Sienna, you taught me everything I know, you called me a hero when no one else believed in me, and I thank you for that, but it's time for you to die. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, or something that, of that, that nature. Maybe you had Sienna show up earlier, so the first time we see this cool new character isn't you know, the time she dies. Yeah, maybe if we saw her earlier, we would see, like, I don't know, I don't want to say a mentor-student relationship. Like, Adam really respects her. And, like, I don't know, maybe he should have shown some emotion about it. Because, like, I don't know, like, to kill your teacher, like, the first person that believed in you, I guess if he's, like, a sociopath, he wouldn't care, but I don't think that's necessarily what he is. I think he's just a brat. Mm -hmm. Like, a big brat. <laughs> like, a brat with a, with a giant bee, you know what I mean? But, I don't know, like, I don't know if, 
he should be, like, so entirely selfish. Like, he should be at least a bit manipulative and maybe really sell to the other faunus. Like, hey, guards that are protecting Sienna, I don't want to do this, but the grand purpose of the White Fang can't be ignored. Like, whatever you want to do, like, some cult ideology, it's just just outright killing her. Like, you should either- I feel like they should have either made him a little remorseful about doing it, cause, like, Sienna, like, gave- Sienna gave me everything, you know, and now she- she- unfortunately, she has to die. And, like, this ad- like, he has this twisted sort of sense of self and this twisted sort of ideology where, like, Sienna isn't fulfilling the purpose of the White Fang anymore. She isn't fulfilling the cause. And even though, like, maybe I care about her a little bit, she has to go, like, something. Or just have them fight! Like, that would have been a much easier, less- convoluted solution. Like, just have them fight! She has such a cool what FIGHT! <laughs> I don't know who I'm smacking, just FIGHT! <laughs> anyway. Um, aggressively again. Um, also, what if- here's another thing. So Adam tries to explain the plan with Hazel, right? He brings in Hazel. What if the only reason why he killed her is because she didn't believe in him anymore? Because we know we get sensitive about that, right? Like, with Blake, like, I'm sorry, Blake, I didn't mean to gaslight you, it's just, like, when you don't believe in me, I get a little upset. Like, what if, at first, they were all gonna work together, but then when Sienna doesn't believe in him anymore, that gets, like, twisted in his mind, and he's like, well, there's no other option because she won't listen. You know, like, just like Gira, you're stubborn, you don't want to move with the cause and all that. And, like, yeah. Who's that? And his relationship with Hazel could have used a bit more expanding, but I think Hazel has this killer line like, that's your business, you deal with it. Like, I don't know, I think that's just such a good line from Hazel, like, with all the problems with Hazel, that's a, that's a solid line, right? And then you have Adam near the end of the volume, which I think has to do with vagueness and has to do with being rushed more than it has to do with the problem of the idea, and I mentioned that before, but people are like, why didn't Adam bring more guys to fight? Like, I think it was supposed to be a stealth mission, like putting bombs on the school and then ditching. You know what I mean? But that wasn't conveyed, that was too vague, and people didn't understand that. And even if they did, it wasn't done very well, right? And so I feel like if people had more info, this would have been avoided. Like, these people aren't really dressed for self anyway. Like, what if you had, like, all of these characters, like, dressed in black, putting up the bombs, and Adam being like, don't let anyone see you. We're going in, we're going out, then we watch it burn. Like, something like that could have been so easy to include. And then you'd actually, like, see them put up the bombs, and so when Ilya, like, holds up the bombs being dismantled, like, it kind of connects to each other, mm -hmm. right? And so, like clear that their purpose is not to fight people or anyone, it's a stealth mission without a big team, and so people think that that shows Adam to be incompetent, like, why didn't he bring more guys if he knew this was gonna happen, but he didn't, that's the thing. Like, it was just supposed to be a stealth operation, I feel like if that was conveyed, people would be like, oh, well that's not really Adam's fault then, like, you know what I mean? So I feel like that's, again, like, I feel like all the character problems in Ruby either have to do with them being too vague, and like, I don't want them to have to explain everything, cause like, we're not stupid. But this stuff is also pretty easy to add and would give more character development as well. So I it's not terrible. I feel like if people terrible. are complaining over the fact that, like, it, like it's assumed that the reader would understand, oh, they probably didn't bring a lot of people because it's probably a stealth mission. Yeah. People then bitching about that, I, that just seems odd. I don't know, but I understand why they're bitching, though, because it's just another... Uh, like, I guess it's because this whole scene, people, like, think it undermines Adam's character, that he looks very incompetent. Well, right? I, I think that actually adds to him, but I'll say Well, well, I think that's what I want to talk about now. Like, I think that Blake, like, hitting him and falling down was poorly done, but I understand what they were trying to do, and I think that that should have been- that was just a rush problem. You know what I mean? Because I think that the idea is there, is that he still sees her as, like, a weak little girl he could easily manipulate, and now she catches him off guard, but, like, what if, like, Blake actually used a tactic that she only, like, learned with Team Ruby? Like, actually hitting him? Like, I'm sure he knows, like... He, like, he knows vague things about her combat style, right? But remember when she did, like, the ice and fire clones? Why, mm -hmm. When she got weiss from dust? She doesn't normally carry dust around, and so mm -hmm. I wonder if that would have been something new that he wouldn't have recognized, because, like, just hitting him, people were like, well, Adam probably knows how she fights, so that shouldn't have surprised that him. That could have been a good scene, and, like, if she explodes in ice, and I was like, where did you learn that? And, like, a schnee. Like, yeah. A like schnee! That. Like, exactly. And, like, that would be something Adam wouldn't have expected, right? Uh, right? And that would have explained why. That's what I was trying to say. I put why and right together and we got white. Um, 
Like, why he got beaten, right? Like, it would have been a cooler moment instead of him just going, like, whack! Like, you know? Like, imagine she uses the ice, right? And then, like, he's like, what? And then she uses the fire, and then it's just like, boom! And then it goes, wee! And then she's like, it's me! And, you know, whatever you said, right? And I think that would work, because I think, I understand the idea here. Like, Adam should realize, like, he thinks he's unstoppable, right? Like, he thinks that nobody can beat him, and that Blake just bested him, and that made him raise, that made him unnaturally hysterical enough to try and blow up the school while they're still there, right? He's so narcissistic and full of himself, he can't believe that he'd lose to her in that moment, and he acts irrationally, right? But I don't feel like him acting irrationally came through very well. People just were like, wow, Adam turned into a little bitch, like, instead of seeing what turned him into the little bitch. But I feel like that's because the scenes I that would have like shown that are rushed. Turning him into a little bitch is missing, like, I don't know, the greater metaphorical resonance of having this person, like, this abuser, this very violent, vile person. Uh, realize that this person is not some, like, cosmic evil that's gonna wreck your shit, but yeah. rather is, like, this very pathetic person who is not And that's so, what we talked not, about, like, and that was not, sort of my defense not of some, that like, scene. Yeah, not some, like, cosmic evil, but really just some person uh, acting selfishly, and you see the yeah. selfishness, out of a skewed uh, perception of the world, and yeah. I quite enjoyed that. And they I like that, done too. It better. Well, that's what I'm saying. I like that, too. Yeah. And that was our, like, video which in is, defense think, of Adam, which yeah. was that what we talked about. Like, the idea is that he's supposed to be, like, he's supposed to seem pathetic. He's supposed to seem, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's supposed to seem like a little bitch. But I think that we would have, like, maybe it would have helped more if we had more in the scene to show it's not... Like, he didn't just become a little bitch, like, in between volume one and volume five. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or volume three and volume five. Like, that's something that happened... Like, because of all of these things that, like, were happening in the scene. And maybe if the scene was slowed down, like, if it was given more time, if they actually had a fight, and maybe Blake did something cooler than just beat him over the head, because that wasn't cool. Like, it was in slow motion, they zoomed in on her mouth, and, like, all that, like, when she was, like, like, you don't, or whatever. I don't remember what she said anymore, but it's, like, it's, like, it's been a minute. you know what I mean? Um, and I think Adam pressing the bomb button is a really good idea. Like, he's willing to blow himself up and all these people, and, like, I feel like, like, that goes into the cult ideology of the White Fang. Like, oh, we're gonna say that Sienna martyred herself, right? So, oh, Adam was a martyr. He had to blow himself up in the school to kill all these people, right? That's kind of the ideology that would have. And, I don't know, I think that him running away does make sense because, as Blake said, he wants to pick them off one by one. And, see, like that, like, if we had just one line, like, one throwaway line sometimes explaining things, and not, like, to, sh like, put exposition over the head or whatever, but, like I said, like, hey, like, this is an in-and-out stealth mission, like, just something like that, I don't know. And actually seeing them put the bombs up would kind of be cool, but I don't know. Like, all these faunas with different talents actually putting the bombs on the stuff. You know what I mean? And, like, this is just, like, I don't want to be like, it's not Adam's fault, because obviously we know he's a fictional character being written by people, but I feel like it's the situations that they're putting him in is making him less and less favorable because of how they're rushing and because of the vagueness and all of that. But let's keep going, Hunter, because there is actually sort of uh, stuff to praise. But I would like to say that... I think a Joffrey-style meltdown, like, after things, like, weren't going his way, like, <laughs> I would have liked that, you know what I mean? But yeah, I think it's just being vague and rushing scenes and stuff, like, you know, fleshing them out and exploring some concepts that we've mentioned, and even ones we haven't, like, I'm not saying our way is the right way, but that's personally what I would do to fix it. I think, to the fire in Ice Clone, like, that would have been such a good callback to Volume 2, like, did they forget we can do that? Like, I don't know, <laughs> like, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll remember eventually. Uh, in terms of praise, I don't really have anything. I'm sorry. Like, he's cool looking! He has a cool sword! I think, okay, he has a cool I semblance, will say this. And he was terrifying and pretty threatening when he cut off Yang's arm, like, voice I, acting aside. I like Adam for what he means. He represents... What, what he means to be. What, what, he, what, he, what he... I think, here's the thing. I think we're judging someone who's not a, not experiencing a complete arc yet. And Maybe. I feel like we under, will better understand him as a metaphor, metaphorical stand-in for people who use, like, divisive fear tactics, and you realize these people are are not... But that I mean, doesn't mean threat, that they couldn't plant seeds earlier. they're not, yeah. And the they the could arc. have done it better. But That's I what feel I'm like, saying. I'm I feel saying, like yeah. that will still come out later, and we'll, I we'll agree, still I get agree. that payoff. Especially, I think they're definitely teasing a payoff with the Adam trailer. 
I'm looking forward to that. I think so, too. And I think that is a sign that they took criticism and they're now improving his character. Like, I don't know if he was meant to be around this volume. I don't know if they're only doing that now because people looked at that and were like, y'all fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I think we're overestimating the degree in which any but at least one if person fo- has an effect on Ruby, or if we if should If they're have an focusing on, Ruby. on him, though, that means yeah. that at least maybe they've at least looked at things that went wrong to fix it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But yeah, I don't have a lot to talk about. I don't know. The volume three scenes with him is really interesting, and I like how Cinder just came in and burnt his shit down, and he's like, all right, I'll work with you. Oh, yeah. If I have to. <laughs> if I must, you know what if I mean? I must. Uh, so now let's look at the future, because this is the hopeful part of these. Usually the praise is also hopeful, but, like... I basically he, stated yes. my, my piece. I think that what they should do is this, that he goes after Hazel, because he blames Hazel for his failure, because blaming anybody but himself makes sense, right? Because he's selfish and he's narcissistic. And so he's like, this isn't my fault, Hazel didn't give me the power that was promised, right? And whatever, so he has to fight with him. And that, again, shows how dangerous Adam is, because Hazel was a pretty formidable opponent. So, like, if Adam killed Hazel, or at least took him down a couple pegs, he would be like, okay, Adam is still threatening, it's just in that particular scene he was overwhelmed. Now he feels sort of empowered and on a mission (laughs) by, like murdering him and, like, taking Hazel down. Because it's like, because Hazel, like, Adam was like, hey, wanna help me? And Hazel was like, nah, I'm good over here. I'm going back inside. Like, after he got kicked out of the building or whatever. Um, so I think that would be cool. But what if, like, Adam killed Hazel and, like, took its place and then started chasing powers from Salem? You know what I mean? Um, like, and Salem would be like, yikes, I gotta whip this boy and teach him some manners, you know what I mean? Because, like, Salem, like, is pretty strict, right? I feel like some Salem torture would would do him well, you know what I mean? Because, like, you see how she tolerates failure. Like, look at what she did to Tyrion. Obviously, she has people wrapped around her finger in a pretty, like, interesting way. So what if, like, you know, he did kill Hazel, Salem needs a replacement, and Adam's like, hey, knock knock, bitch, like, I want my powers now, like, you know what I mean? Because he's like, Blake, you don't get it, I have friends in high places. Well, where's your friend now, bitch, you know what I mean? Like, maybe he goes after Salem in some capacity because he wants power from her. You know, sort of like Cinder, but obviously for very different reasons. And I think some inner evaluation would be good, too, because I feel like that, we talked about this in other videos, like, like, uh, you know, I, I've been so busy doing all this shit, like, I'm losing the promise I made to the Faunus, right? And, like, maybe he decides the only way he can get back to work, a, like, helping the Faunus is by getting rid of Blake for good so he can move on. And that's why maybe he hunts her down during the volume. And, like, he's lost everything. His position, his power, the only thing he can do is get revenge. Uh, and kill Blake and the, and the others, even if it means that he kills himself or something like that like we can see how deranged he is right because it either goes two ways i feel like he either is like like i lost sight of the cause and then you see sort of the the white fang cult ideology or it's like like well i lost everything so i guess i better kill all of us and then myself like some psychopath maniac you know what i mean but like i think literally anything could be better maybe than what happened last okay season. i'm not We're trying to trash it. i'm not trying to trash the last season because i, I didn't did, think it was that I, bad I, I i think that they just rushed i things. was saying i don't know it that's popped, what i'm saying it popped up in my notifications where i'm uh, saying it's rushed execution who, i'm not saying who's someone who does videos where he constantly talks shit about ruby I don't know. There's a couple. Why? Well, I saw this one guy. He kept on doing videos about like, like he talked about like the best or least worst Ruby episodes. I'm like, do you like the show? Oh, that was Unicorn. He's a cool okay. dude. He's all right. He does like the show. He wants it to get better. That's why he. It just seems he does weird. I don't things. know. I realize later on. I realize now. I want more positivity. I well, like hearing I guess... people talking about why they like shows. And not and, well, that's why shows. we have praise positive, like positive. Possibility. Like, Although, when you don't put anything in the praise, or. Well, I'm then sorry, really, I don't have anything to praise for Adam. When we talk about Sun and Ilya, it'll be okay. <laughs> I think that. I think it's just. We're again, judging someone by the middle of their character arc. I think they could have done it better, but however, I still think. I agree with you to some extent, but I also think that. Adam to come, and I think would be quite good. I also think it's just about rushing. Like, it's You've just. You've been like, talking a lot. I think we all know what you think, Al. I know, but it, it's just like. Because they were still, like, working on, like, the scripts for the last episodes when Volume 1, like, when the first episode of Volume 5 started. Like, that's unacceptable. That's last minute work. No, that happens all the time. I know, but it shouldn't. I know, I know, but I'm saying that for, 
for their particular skill, I don't think it should be happening. And I'm not trying to trash them, but, like, if a professional, like, uh, you know, TV writer or director does that, like, that's one thing. But, like, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to trash Miles and Carrie, but I'm saying for their particular skill level, maybe they should take a bit more time to revise and stuff like that. That's all I mean. Also, something else that they have a problem with is telling the animators, like, how to animate the fight scenes and stuff. But, like, apparently, like, I apparently it happens a lot, like, in animation, but also... Well, they are what the showrunners. I know, but what equally happens a lot is people will just leave that up to the animators because they know, like, the writers don't may not necessarily have an eye for that. And, like, I guarantee you, like, somebody, like, suggested for them to go whack like that. Like, I doubt, like, one of the animators was like, hmm, that looks like a good idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because they just, I feel like what they need to do is put key points, like, in the fight scenes and just be like, okay, whatever the rest of you guys want to do, like, y'all just go do it. But, like, this, this, and this needs to happen somewhere in there, you know? I heard someone talked about how they think that they should stop focusing on moving the camera and instead work the animation. I'm like, you fucking idiot, you need cinematography. <laughs> well, you so need you need people, the camera, too, what the When people hell? talk about, like, they should do this Who's when the they're in no way, like, informed <laughs> on how movies made, this includes us. I get the very quiet, like, urge in the back of my head just to be like, shut up and stay in your But lane. still, I think that, I don't know, I think that that's something that... <sighs> is something that we can understand, though, is the animators just doing their work instead of, like, the writers needing to write every little fight action. Like, that yeah, doesn't make sense, does whatever. it? I mean, I would disagree, saying that there's still a place for I know, but I'm saying, like, you don't need to, like, put in every little, like, thing in a fight. Like, just, like, let the, the animators know what they're doing. Just let them have the reins and then just put key points in the fight scenes. I mean, an animator may know how to animate, but a lot of animation is not making fight scenes. I know that, but I'm saying that a lot of the people on the team obviously know what they're doing with the fight choreography, also, right? Also, also, Carrie is a director. Yeah. And also the writer, and the director would presumably also direct I hope fight so, scenes. But, so... But there's a difference between directing, like, in terms of, like, this needs to happen, this needs to happen, this needs to happen, and instead Hell, of being, like... this video's already 26 minutes I know, long. but instead of being, like, Let's okay, so in longer. this second, like, you have to punch upwards, and in but this second you, really you have to punch forwards. But you really know that that's happening, uh, or could it just be one dude being like, they're struggling my artistic endeavor? <laughs> What? Appar apparently, like, we've discussed this before. Apparently, it sounds like that may be what's happening, because they've talked about doing that before. Oh, like, in panels and whatnot, which... He's a director anyways. I know, but... You gotta trust your team. You gotta trust them, too. You know, that they don't need their hand held. There's a difference between leading and then, like, m like... Whatever that would be. Micromanaging. Micromanaging, I would exactly. Also not want to like you don't know if it's micromanaging or not, or just them telling I mean, them what needs to happen. Based on them. what they've said, it sounds like microman like based off of their own admission, that's what it sounds like. That's all. Well, you know, as an you know expert what I mean? director and fight choreographer, you of course really do know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, like, even even if we don't know every, like, little thing about, like, animating or fight choreo or whatever it is, like, we're also not, like, the audience also isn't stupid. And, like, when they self-admit their problems, like, then you're, you're admitting your own guilt, I guess, in a way. But anyway. And that's it. This is a long video, you're right. But Adam has a lot of things wrong with him. So... Poor Adam. Poor Adam. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, you guys should support us on Patreon if you want to, or just subscribe to get notified, and, uh, our, our next one of these will be a, a bit more balanced, a bit more hopeful. Uh, so we'll see you guys later. Bye. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you to all of our wonderful patrons over on Patreon, our $20, uh, patrons. If you guys don't know, they get six video tickets, uh, that means they can ask us or, uh, request a video from us. Uh, they have access to our monthly Patreon, uh, group voice chat, and they also get access to a special VIP chat on our server. Our $10 patrons get week in advance early access plus, which means they'll see videos more in a week uh, in advance after they're done. They get three video tickets. Uh, and for our $5 patrons, they get a week uh, in advance early access of so seven days 
early. And of course, our $1 patrons uh, have uh, their name uh, featured in, in our videos. Uh, and they have access to our Discord server. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I hope to see you guys uh, joining the Discord server soon. Bye, guys.